Oh, hi everyone, it's Susie here, Crypto Granny. Before I start, I want to give a hey and a really, you know, thank you, thank you, uh, CKJ, Joseph Mann. I really, really appreciate your support. You know what, you've supported me, babe, the, the last two years. I love you dearly. Please go to C CKJ's um, crypto YouTube. He's great. I love his stuff. He's a really smart, clever guy. He's a very honourable guy. Uh, um, I think, you know, he's a great guy, seriously, and I just want you to support him. I give him a shout out because, you know what, he's always been super nice to me and super helpful um, as, a, as an Aussie that <laughs> didn't know anything much about YouTube. So, Joseph, I take my hat off you, man. Love you dearly, and thank you for your shout out. Cheers, babe. Oh, hello, everyone. It's Susie, Acker Crypto Granny. I hope you're all well, looking after yourself, being kind to yourself being kind to your family and friends, looking after your dear parents, your dear friends, looking after your beautiful putty cats, whatever animal you have, and just being kind to people in this world just to make it a better world. Now, today or last night, we saw risk assets sell off quite dramatically. We saw it right across every risk asset class out there, including the cryptocurrency market, the equity market, the credit markets, uh, the swap curve markets, the credit default swap markets, uh, and also emerging market currencies and emerging market equity markets as well. So uh, what got it going pretty much, I would have to say, is that equities were very much overextended. We said that they were overextended at a stock level, at an index level, and also at a sector level. But also, uh, you know, there's a complete divide between what's going on in uh, the macroeconomics for the US, the microeconomics of the US, and what's going on with the risk assets uh, markets within the US. So in other words, as unemployment keeps rising in the US and getting worse, as the trade deficit figures keep rising and getting worse, or the consumer index figures or the confidence figures get worse, or as COVID gets worse, the equity markets or the risk markets just keep ignoring it constantly. And that's what doesn't make sense. So there seems to be a lot of money around uh, Wall Street, the Dow nearly got to 30,000, you know, it was at 29,200 or something. The NASDAQ and the indices were up for 10 days straight. The NASDAQ, everyone kept buying tech stocks, tech stocks, tech stocks. Uh, these indices have, have just been up so much, about 6% in, in this month alone, uh, and just kept going up no matter what was coming out or what was being printed on the economic side. And, you know, as we know, the U.S. is in massive deficit the deficit just gets worse and worse and worse. The unemployment cycle gets worse and worse and worse. Uh, people, you know, are, are queuing up for, for, for employment claims. and They're not actually getting paid. People are being evicted on the streets. It's just a shocker. And, uh, you know, it, you know, the equity market really had to give back. We did see uh, in the cryptocurrency market, it was giving back before the Ethereum market, uh, before the equity market. And I have trading positions with my clients and we've been... You know, trading uh, ETC, uh, I gave out a trading directive to sell ETC, Ethereum Classic, because it had three hacks, around $7.10. We've still got that short position on from the 18th of uh, August. And also, last week, I said buy Tron. So we're actually long Tron, and we're actually short Ethereum Classic. And that, that position for our trading position has been pretty pretty pronto, pretty uh, pretty good because, uh, you know, we've actually made money being long Tron. Now, there's reasons why I said get long Tron. Uh, Ethereum is a joke and so is Ethereum Classic. Ethereum miners last month made $113 million, okay? The Bitcoin miners that use the same miners as Ethereum also made a lot of money. Now, those guys would be long Ethereum and they'd be long Bitcoin and they would have been selling down all their, you know, all the Ethereum they've made from you and me. I don't use Ethereum, by the way, but all the Ethereum they made from the transaction fees uh, and, you know, from the gas fees and they would have been selling down, you know, all their Bitcoin as well. To think that uh, the miners for Ethereum one day made $17 million is just obscene. And that's why I like Tron so much because Tron was on the Ethereum platform. You can talk about Jason, uh, Justin Sun, whatever you like. But the thing is, that guy's come up with the goods time and time again, okay? Uh, he effectively, you know, he went from proof of work on Ethereum's platform. He didn't like it. He said it was a shocking platform. As it gets too busy, you can't handle the transactions. 
uh, everything slowed down because the miners wanted to take the highest gas fees, all that sort of thing. And he went to proof of stake very quickly. Now, we know Ethereum has had a lot of trouble going to proof of stake. They're not even there yet. Justin Sun went to that very, very quickly uh, after his ICO for, for Tron. And he went to proof of stake very, very quickly. And the reason why I like Tron is there is a lot going on with Tron. A lot. And, you know, I look at all the fundamentals sitting in Slack. And, uh, you know, there's just so much going on here. You know, they've set up this Genesis Mining uh, Sun token. You can have staking. They're looking at going into DeFi. They're doing smart contracts. Uh, they look very good, uh, bullish, bullish while very, very good. Uh, they've, you know, they've also uh, got partners of Waves and Band Protocol to expand their DeFi business. Uh, you know, these guys have done some amazing things as far as I'm concerned. They bought BitTorrent. Uh, uh, 200 million clients, uh, literally for nothing because they monetized with BitTorrent, okay? Very, very smart operator. Again, you know, is invested in Polynex, you know, the exchange, right? Also has very close connections with C CZ, you know, um, Chang Peng from Binance, who's the owner of Binance, okay? Also has very close connections with extremely high net worth wealthy people out of China like Jack Ma as far as I'm as far as I'm concerned Tron where it was we started buying Tron at 0.011 is just seriously cheap and is still cheap you know at four cents or whatever it is at the moment okay uh, and to me they've made it very clear uh, Justin Sun's made it very clear that he is a competitor to Ethereum okay this fellow is getting more dApps on his platform he's getting more icos on his platform and he knows what he's doing and it's look honestly it's cheap tron is cheap now this is not financial advice this is what i'm invested in what this is what i'm trading and i'm going long tron for my trading portfolio but also i'm invested in tron for my own uh, investment portfolio but it's just for me this is only education only okay i'm not a financial advisor but tron's active addresses have grown 4,452% 4, uh, against Ethereum, which was about 123%, okay? It's all in the numbers. And if you look at the numbers the way I do and keep an idea in my database of what's going on, you can literally make money basically on public data, okay? And if you do your homework, and that's why it's so important to do your homework, guys and girls. Some people just want to get on things and not even know anything uh, fundamentally about, you know, a cryptocurrency. Now, the thing is, Ethereum Classic, as I said, has had three hacks and the crypto, the super cryptocurrency market was taking that coin up. The technology does not work. There's a real risk that Ethereum Classic could be um, delisted from all the major exchanges like OKEx, right? Now, OKEx is one of the biggest uh, traders of uh, Ethereum Classic. They lost 5.6 million, right? With Ethereum Classic, okay? Um, golly, my phone always goes. You know, it's all my friends, my phone always goes. Um, they lost so much money with Ethereum Classic. Uh, it's not funny. And if they have another break or another, uh, you know, another uh, hack, 51% network attack, they're going to be gone, man. Absolutely gone. That's it. Uh, another thing I want to point out is privacy coins, right? Australians now, we are not allowed to invest or trade privacy coins. And that is just, to me, is that's what's going to happen, okay? Privacy coins are going to be gone by within, you know, by the dust because any regulation will not allow privacy coins. Uh, Monaro is associated with, you know, malware. You know, people can lose money, all sorts of things. Now, also what I will say, I did a recent video about a cobalt a uh, vault wallet people are putting their uh, coins on one wallet and there was a poor fellow that lost 16 million dollars in bitcoin right because he had one wallet and he got conned by malware uh, to update his wallet online it was a hot wallet online and basically lost all his cryptocurrency now whether you like me advertising a wallet or what i don't care i'm just trying to protect you guys the fact is you never have all your crypto on one wallet okay and there's been problems with Ledger, S and X, and there's been problems with the Tracer. You have to diversify your wallets, whether you like it or not. You have so much money invested in crypto, boys and girls, and yet you bark at the idea of buying a wallet that's going to protect your assets, right? 
again, you know, I'm trying to protect you here. I don't need to do this. You know, I do this for free and I still get bad comments from people. Seriously, what the hell? You know, fair income, you do this stuff, you're trying to protect someone and all you do is get slack from you guys and girls. I mean, that's crap, right? That's garbology. So I'm just trying to protect you here, right? Fair income, I really am. So, you know, coming back to the crypto assets overnight, as I said, we as I said, we did see a big, a reasonably big sell-off. Bitcoin got below ten thousand, but it got scooped up pretty quickly. And my view is, you know, my educational view, not trading advice or anything else. Below ten thousand, Bitcoin is a buy. Okay, I don't like Ethereum for a lot of different reasons. I don't like Ethereum Classic. To me, there are better stories out there. Okay, now I've got a, a project that I've got to do a big project for a client. Uh, and I tell you, I, I just think Ethereum is going to bleed because literally it's too expensive. I mean, someone said to me the other day also with Bitcoin, they were doing a $30 transaction and they got charged $6, right? And it took them 48 hours to get the, their cash settlement. Again, XRP costs you nothing. You get it within three seconds, right? Bitcoin, six bucks out of $30 this is 500 basis points. That's a lot of money, okay? A lot of money, right? Now, you know, some of these DeFi's are way too expensive. Link, way too expensive. It's a massive sell here, massive sell. Okay, um, you know, again, Binance, I'm, I'd be targeting to buy Binance for me at under 20 bucks. I don't like BSV. There's a lot of things I don't like here. I don't like CRO, which is a part of MCO. You know, they have debit cards, big deal. You know, the whole world has debit cards. And yet MCO and this thing, have been up massively. It just doesn't make sense, right? EOS. Yes, we know the Chinese buy EOS, but EOS has had a lot of problems with their technology technology and the founders and the foundation and everything else, right? Tron has done so well and it will continue to do well. Tron is cheap, guys. Cheap. Cheap, cheap, cheap. You know, Ada, yes, we know that they've gone through Shelley too and they're doing more technology, but Cardano hardly has any clients, right? XRP has millions and millions and millions and millions of clients, right? Let's put this in perspective. Millions and millions of clients, not just 300. The Bank of Times says it has 16 million clients. MoneyGram has millions, all sorts of things. Now, lots going on with XRP when I go through some of the news stories with you. And, you know, things are always going on with XRP, right? Other cryptocurrencies are doing better than XRP, but they don't have the fundamentals. They don't have the goods, right? You know, fundamentally, their cryptocurrency technology doesn't work. And we've even seen it in DeFi's, where the crypto technology wasn't even audited, okay? And the technology didn't work, right? Now, VeChain down here is just a gimme gimme. This is cheap, right? I don't like IOTA, right? Now, if you know about IOTA, You'll see that on some of the boards, it's got MyOta and some of the boards, it's got IOTA. This is really important. If you read IOTA's white paper, right, one MyOta equals a million IOTA, right? So coin market cap actually has their market capitalization wrong. One million IOTA equals one IOTA, right? It should be, the market cap should be times a million because it's not right, okay? There's so many things wrong with this market. People think stable coins are stable when they're not. Um, you know, they're only they're index length. They think that, you know, you, you have stability in stable coins. You haven't, right? It's like US Tether, right? It's issued by a company called Tethering. has no credit rating. They don't buy US dollars, 100% US dollars against US Tether. There is so much you don't know about this market, boys and girls, and yet you won't pay someone like me, you know, $10 or $45 a month, you know, to, to secure your money and to save yourself from losing a lot of money, particularly when markets go down. You know, I have a patron, which is not expensive, and yet there's so much to learn about this market. There's 5,500 cryptos, okay? And seriously, people know nothing. They know nothing. They just want to get on something that goes to the moon. It's great when markets are up. But I tell you something, you can lose so much money if you're sitting in the wrong wallet or whatever, right? You can just lose your crypto. The risks in this market are unbelievable. And I cannot believe people do not get educated, right? It just shocks me.
to death, right? Fair dinkum, it really does. Anyway, look, I am in a rant today, but what got this market going is the terrible figures, right? The terrible figures out of the economy. You know, the Dow was down over 800 points. The NASDAQ was down, you know, 649. You know, the S&P was down 125. We saw this key reversal yesterday. You know, the tech sector was expensive. The index sector was expensive. The stock sector was expensive, right? Now, the thing is, is this just a one-day event or is it more? And I do believe it's more, okay? So I do think there will be more of it, but I do believe it, you know, with the crypto market, if the big Bitcoin gets below 10,000, you know, VeChain gets to 0.012 or something, it's, you know, the, these are buy levels as far as I'm concerned. So very quickly, BitMEX adds futures contracts of Chainlink and Tezos. Now, I look at derivatives all the time, my trading positions all the time, right? You know, as long uh, Chainlink at nine bucks. And the reason why I was long at chain, with Chainlink is because there were so many shorts in the derivatives market. You cannot trade if you don't know what's happening in the derivatives market, whether it's at the futures market, whether it's the petrol swaps market, whether it's uh, the credit swap default market, or whether it's the options market. And you're going to say to me, what are all those things? Well, join my Patreon and you'll learn, but I'm not going to tell you now. That's a fact, right? You can't trade if you don't know those markets and what are the short positions or the long positions in those markets, right? You know, I'm not going to give you that info for nothing, right? Now, you know, Monaro tracking tool. Some people say it's not effective. Some people say it is. Certainly the Fed, you know, and the trackers uh, of the government say it's effective. Now, this is a, a thing, you know, a Bitcoin plunge because the miners were selling, right? They, they made all this money from, you know, everyone that uses Bitcoin and everyone that uses Ethereum. They made a fortune, millions and millions and millions, and they've been selling. And yet people say, oh, you know, people are Bitcoin maximals and say use Bitcoin, right? You know, when the miners are making themselves a fortune, okay? You're better off using XRP. XRP doesn't cost you anything, barely. You know, what, 30 cents max for $50 million, right? Uh, Denmark uses blockchain to fight against corruption, all these different things. Apparently, uh, Tony Bay was offered $500,000 to support some unnamed DeFi project. Now, I don't know whether the fellow took it, but it's very good of him, I have to say, for telling the truth. Now, it just shows you, people, you've got to be aware of this stuff, right? If things come to ICO, uh, whatever, they will come, these people will come, to people like Tony Vase or someone else and offer them money to say good things about the DeFi project or the ICO. And if you're that gullible to buy something, you've got to remember if someone like this is saying it's great or whatever, they're being paid for it. Now, there's other top YouTubers that were paid for stuff, okay? You look back, I'm not going to name people, but they were constantly paid. You know, in other markets, that's illegal if you don't disclose it, Okay. I have not been paid by anyone to say anything, right? You know, yes, I'm an affiliate of Cobol Vault Wallet. I haven't received one cent because no one's bought anything yet. But I tell you, if I, if I sell something, I get 10%. But I've never, ever sold anything else. That's it. I, you know, I was offered thousands of dollars and thousands of coins. But I won't perjure myself like that. But you've got to be aware when big YouTubers are out there saying, you know, this is a buy, buy, buy. You know, they could be paid for it. And people in the American markets are really stupid. They don't think that this can happen. Of course it can. You know, and then I had people come back at me, and today you're right, crypto granny's cranky, come back to me and say, what's wrong with being paid? Well, I've got, I got news for you, right? It's illegal in other markets. You can go to jail for it, right? If you do not disclose to retail clients, it's a vested interest. You're making money at the expense of some poor person who's in the cryptocurrency market trying to make money. It's illegal. It's completely illegal, all right? And that's a fact. So, you know, let's have a look at this. SBI Holdings has set up blockchain-based digital stock exchange in Saka. Fantastic, man. That means the stock exchange doesn't settle every two days. It can settle straight away. And SBI is behind Ripple, XRP. Ripple, XRP, you know, they're, they're like an octopus. They are everywhere. And when all this comes together, XRP will be the best cryptocurrency out there and the number one coin. So much is going on. I know it's disappointing, it keeps going down, but the cryptocurrency market is so stupid, right? It's so uneducated and so dumb, and it just picks up on garbology coins like Ethereum Classic. It still goes up when it's had three hacks, that it's beyond me fundamentally. But eventually, 
you know, more people will get more professional and it'll start going by the fundamentals as well as not just the technicals. Now, again, SoftBank leads 100 million investment in bio and health sector. And again, SoftBank is one of Ripple's clients, okay? You can, and, and I'm not going to tell you exactly all this because you can read it yourself, right? Too many lazy people in the cryptocurrency market that don't want to, you know, don't want to spend any money and they don't want to do any work, right? So I'm not going to feed you everything. You know, again, huge transactions for these currencies, right? Huge. You know, uh, XRP is the most liquid of all these other currencies, cryptocurrencies. Everyone talks about the liquidity of XRP. Get real. Why don't you look at the 5,500 cryptocurrencies out there? You know, at least 90% of them are not liquid, man. They're not liquid. The journals should be focusing on other things, not the illiquidity of XRP, which XRP is the most liquid crypto out there. Focus on something else, journos, because it's too easy to keep focusing on XRP. Do some, you know, other writing for other cryptos that are scams, man. Complete scams. It just frustrates me. Bitstamp, we know that's going to support, you know, additional cryptos and stable coins, super, and all those different ones there. So let's just quickly go through this. Bitcoin launches EOS, Chainlink, Tesla, and Cardano futures. That's big. Completely big, right? Uh, you know, we know that years of debt, derivatives, you know, now we're talking about credit, uh, derivative swaps, which is what's used in the bonds market. I know these very well. I used to price them. I used to trade them. Credit default swaps, CDS as they're called. Open Derivative Exchange is going to introduce those to the retail element. Wow, guys, you really need to know what these are, and I'm not going to explain it. Go and look it up and learn something. You see, there's so much stuff you need to know in this market, right? You know, uh, again, Tron looks very good to me technically, looks friggin' sensational. Any pullbacks in Tron, I'm a buyer. Now, everyone goes on about Justin Sun, right? They may not like him or whatever. They might be racist, and I'm certainly not. But the guy, you know, delivers, okay? Whether you like him or not. And in terms of relative value, two cents, four cents, one cent, Tron is cheap, right? For what it does. It has a better technical system than Ethereum, right? Much better, and it costs you barely anything compared to Ethereum, and it transacts much quicker and much uh, faster because of proof of stake. As you know, proof of work causes so much cost in terms of electricity, not only the cost to transact with gas and everything else for Ethereum, it's a joke. And it's no wonder the miners made $17 million one day. I mean, that that is obscene, right? Now, Revolut coming to Australia, thank God, because the banks rip us off blind and we haven't been able to open up Revolut accounts and we can trade, start trading crypto with them. Also, Nigeria's got the worst exchange situation uh, going and they're basically actively buying Bitcoin. And I've mentioned that before. It's like Turkey. If things are bad, things are bad. You can look up this, fee bonanza for the Ethereum miners. They're rubbing their hands with glee, man, because everyone's really stupid, you know, buying Ethereum, right? Uh, there's all these, be careful, guys. There's all these malwares, right, on the computer. Be careful. You know, they can steal Bitcoin and all sorts of things, Tor, BTT, whatever, okay? They're out there. They're trying to get your crypto. So you need cold wallets like the Kobo, okay, the Kobo. You need cold wallets to work, right? This wallet, and I'm going to go through how to use it, is freaking amazing. It's unbelievable, okay? That's it, right? It's it's just sensational, right? And you can see it. You can see the quality of this thing. It's amazing, right? So let's just quickly go through what else we got here. Uh, Brazil Central Bank announces uh, central digital uh, bank currency. Big deal. What are they going to use? They're going to use fiat. Uh, Coco Amatol invests in digital asset platform. So we're seeing this all over the place, right? What was that? Nothing much. We're seeing it everywhere, okay? Again, we know about that. Uh, what else we know? North Korea's been hacking exchanges. They've got away with two billion so far. So far, if you leave your money on the exchange, you could run the risk of being hacked, okay? And that's a fact. You've got to understand, you know, when we have, uh, you know, our ledgers and everything else, We've got to keep everything safe and our private keys safe and everything else. But it also depends on whether it's a hot wallet or a cold wallet, okay? These things, you know, allow you to view what's on the on the ledger or on the blockchain, right? So you've got to be very careful the way you store things, right? And there's been some big transfers uh, with Ripple as well. Uh, 
there's been a lot of big transfers and, uh, you know, it's going to Binance and it's going to Bitthumb, which is an unannounced uh, ODL corridor for Ripple, okay? So, again, liquidity, XRP liquidity all the way. Uh, and as we keep going, what else we got here? Bitcoin, uh, Bank of... Look, this guy, you know, he, he, this guy, uh, Carney, always turns and says... Uh, is it, yeah, Bailey, I should say. Just changes his mind all the time. Carney used to be the same, okay? Constantly changes their mind. One minute they're saying crypto is great, and the next minute they're saying it's crap or garbology. So they just annoy me, okay? Uh, Singapore Exchange wants to become Asia's benchmark for pricing Bitcoin. And we've got the Senate Banking Committee shows continued interest in crypto assets, okay? And talking to the, uh, you know, the comp, uh, the comp comptroller of the cryptocurrency. Uh, and that, that fellow is excellent, Brian Brooks, okay? He, uh, gave, um, uh, you know, a banking license to, who was it? Vero, uh, which is another one of, it so happens is another client of, uh, of, uh, XRP Ripple. And now they've got a banking license and those guys are doing more, okay? So, you know, uh, Ripple's quite amazing, okay? So let's just quickly go back to, I'm long Tron at the moment. Uh, let's quickly go back, uh, to what else we got here. Um, other markets. Now, very quickly, we have, um, here we go in there, very quickly. We've got yields going down because obviously risk markets are selling off. You know, the Aussie is a 0 0.922 10 year bond. Uh, the US a 0.625. Uh, what I keep very close eye on is US yen, okay? US yen looks like garbage, okay? It's 106.18. If that thing starts going through 105, 100, and it should, you're going to see Bitcoin go through the roof and you're going to see gold through the roof okay it's really clear gold's at 1940 at the moment silver's at 2867 all consolidating all looking very good to me okay so if we go and have a look at some of the uh you know if we have a look at some of the uh go to trading view very quickly and i'll just put that in so you can have a look you know gold looks really good to me right it seriously looks good to me uh so does um so does silver Right, but I just want to show you something on US, right? US yen. And I'm very, very negative US yen. And this will drive up, uh, the cryptocurrency markets and Bitcoin because people will see that, you know, the US yen is on a pre precipice about to fall and collapse, right? If the deficit figures keep getting worse, which they are, the deficit figures are getting worse and worse. This US yen is going to go through 100 very quickly, okay? Very quickly. If we put this on a chart, it's in a big downtrend. And it could get down to this level here, you know, 99 and even 75 down here. And I believe that's where US yen is going. The US dollar depreciating against, depreciating against any, every other currency out there as well as crypto. It means that the US person will have less money to spend. Everything will become more expensive when the currency devalues. The US goes down against the yen, down against the Aussie dollar, down against the pound, and you will see uh, deficit figures get bigger and bigger. Uh, your spending power will be less and less, and with that, you will find gold will go through the roof, and so will Bitcoin, okay? And that's a fact, right? And that's Keep an eye on that because that will drive these markets big time. Okay, if we have a look at Bitcoin, you know, um, Bitcoin to me is a great buy under 10,000, even 9,500. Still above the 200 day moving average. It still looks very, very good to me. Okay. And also, don't forget, like I said, look at the shorts, right? Always got your shorts if you're going to trade this. If you're investing, you know, it's, you're not worried about in shorts, but if you're, if you're trading this thing, you need to look at your shorts, okay? Right? Because it means that there's a lot of people that are short this market and they'll short right up here. And as the market rallies down, they have to basically buy back their shorts, okay? At the moment, they're accumulating shorts, but you've always got to look at that as well, okay? Let's have a quick look at Tron because I do like Tron very, very much, okay? very quickly and Tron looks pretty good if you look at the daily on this thing it's come back a bit but doing a lot of volume okay got up to you know nearly five cents 
looks pretty good. And that thing to me can really, you know, can go a lot higher than five cents. You know, that's peak. You know, I had a target price in trying to 25 cents and I do believe it's going to get there. Okay, guys and girls. So that's me today. Um, we'll talk. I do uh, podcasts every day for my people on Patreon, my clients on Patreon. Thank you very much for supporting me. Don't forget, I've got a live YouTube on Sunday, 7 o'clock Central Eastern Time. Uh, we're going to talk about Ripple and XRP uh, liquidity, but we're going to talk about other cryptocurrencies as well, right? Now, you know, just to qualify this, I can't tell you everything about 5,500 cryptocurrencies, but, I, but you know, please ask me questions. Uh, we're going to be on Super Chat and it's going to be a bit of fun, okay? So I look forward to seeing you guys and girls there. Don't forget about all my merchandise. Please support us because we don't get paid much at all. I mean, I certainly don't. Um, and, um, you know, check us out and please support us on Patreon. I do a, a podcast every day and I do a lot of work on Patreon, crypto reviews and everything, depending on uh, your Patreon level, okay? So I look forward to talking to you again. Thanks, everyone. Uh, crypto Granny. Crypto Granny loves you.